So I'm really excited about the literacy practices because they're a way for me to engage my students in deeper thinking about concepts we're learning about in class. It seems like it's more work to do, but it's not. It's how to take the things we're already doing and make them more meaningful for students as we go through. So better ways for them to engage with the material, think deeper about the material. Today, you are working like an engineer because you're gonna be constructing explanations and analyzing and interpreting data. And what's really neat too is many of them are based in students engaging with others, making their own sense of meaning, which we know are like higher order thinking skills that we need to practice with our students. So we use Amplify, which is a science program provided by the county. We're gonna start a geologic time evolutionary history unit. And so our students are going to be behaving as though they are student paleontologists. Start shouting out words that have paleo or ologist in them. Biologist. Biologist. So sometimes you'll see in the lesson that it doesn't look like they're thinking. You know, they're, they're making observations about a skeleton and they might say, well, that skeleton has a soccer ball next to it. You know, but even just basic skills like that forces them to engage with the text. And so therefore later on, they'll remember like, oh, that's soccer ball. Oh, that's for height. Elena, that's such a good observation. Absolutely, even the background can give us a lot of clues. So even sometimes those basic skills, when we use those collaborative processes, students are actually going to use those to do some higher order thinking later on. Like we did in class when we organized the words, like with geologists. Neurologists. Neurologists. Paleontologists. Paleolithic. Paleolithic, who said that? Nice one. We organized that by the last part with the ologists, because it's in, the main word we were like breaking up and that helps with the others because it helps me learn that so if I do see that in language arts or math or social studies I know oh that word means studying. Study of and study. study of. The study of, right? Once I learned about the literacy practices I could see that they were already built into a lot of the things I was doing you know, specifically highlighting how this is how scientists approach text. We're gonna see a lot of students collaborating and making meaning from text. We're going to see students using discipline-specific science skills. They're gonna be breaking down larger words and applying those to new situations. So I try to start with really basic skills that everyone can engage with. And then I like to go over and if they're struggling, like build them up and be like, this was a great observation and kind of help give them almost like a fill in the blank. What do these two things have in common? These are the... So I do work with a lot of multilingual students and having students engage with text is a great opportunity for multilingual students to hear and listen for key specific science words. So when I'm doing something like a rally share where one student shares and another student shares, they can be listening and you might even see me in the video like remind them to listen and be like, I want you to listen for some of the science vocabulary that we've been using. Because listening is such an important skill as students are developing that English language. But I think the thing that you want to get involved with literacy practices is because you are making better lessons for your students. They are critically thinking, when they are working with partners, when they are doing the work of, in this case, real scientists, they are also getting more engaged. That critical thinking sets off that chemical you know, reward pathway in the brain. They feel good, they feel proud. They love to see themselves working towards a difficult task, a difficult text, and achieving. Tails. Bone structures. Bone structures, where they connect, how they connect, what it's doing. I really enjoy the times where uh, Miss Moorhead says to just talk about a topic for a minute. And so you can really think about a lot of different things and it really makes everyone think. It has sharp teeth, which means oh. it is most likely a predator and it eats meat. 
It helps a lot that all the different subjects in school, like language arts, can help a lot with science because a lot of the words that you need to know for science class matter in language arts too. So if you know how to use Greek and Latin roots, you can figure out science. And I think that that's the thing. When we set our students up, when we scaffold it correctly, they are the ones who feel successful. They are proud of themselves. And it's not like you had to buy candy for everyone. They are proud when you say, no, this was from a science journal, and you just read it. And these were huh? invertebrates. That's awesome. 3.4 meters, right? This was not that bad. So often as teachers, one more thing gets added to our plate and it really feels like that's what's going to break the camel's back. But this is not that. This is just an opportunity for you to look at your teaching and get it better with minimal effort on your part. Because the students are ready. They're ready to keep pushing. But in the end, if I could leave with any message, it would be that when we do hard things with them, they're the ones who reap the reward, not just academically, but mentally, that they're the ones who really feel like they can do hard things. They are smart, you know, they're ready. We just have to coach them along a little bit.